Hello everybody! Happy Thanksgiving Eve today! Yes, we got a great show here at The Handmaidens. We're going to make uh, turkey stuffing that is um, completely unique. I bet you I'd wager to bet that if you search the entire internet, you're not going to find the recipe for this stuffing that I'm about to share. It is a family recipe that goes back, uh, well, five generations if you count my kids that are going to eat it. Uh, five generations that I know of, maybe back to who knows where, you know, 10, 20, I don't know, the beginning of time. Maybe the dinosaurs were eating this, but it didn't spread wide. This is an Italian recipe. It's called Ping, and I'm going to show you, share with you how we make it. And it's it's a great time to get together with the family. And that's who I've got here. I've got family here going to uh prepare this stuffing and i'll tell you all about it hold on here let's meet everyone hi everybody you know mondo mondo's here and he's in the stock pot and what he's going to be doing to make our stuffing is he's going to be taking some cheap white bread and he's going to be hand peeling it we don't use that the stuffing crumbs, and we, of course, we don't use that stuffing mix that comes in a box. And I'm going to tell you why maybe you shouldn't either. So he's just going to tear it all apart. When I was a kid, I used to be the youngest one, and I was the one, my job was to tear the bread. My mother would get the bread, white bread, cheapest bread you can find. I don't know why it has to be cheap, but it does. And she would open it up, and then she would... Um, let it the night before and let it get stale. So it's sort of like the breadcrumbs, but not quite. So you want it. I didn't do that because I was a little less prepared. Okay. Um, over here on the chopping block. Yeah, we got good old Janelle chopping away. She is chopping celery, two celery sticks. She's going to chop uh, one good size onion, maybe two. Um, as you know from prior um, prior videos that when I'm cooking, I don't always measure stuff accurately. These are recipes, or this recipe particularly, was handed down through the oral tradition. So there wasn't actually, um, you know, exact amounts. So every, every Thanksgiving, I call my mom up. I'm like, Mom, how do I make the ping again? And, you know, because she, she had been the one that had made it for many years. My aunt made it. My cousins made it. So we got onions, some yellow cooking onions, um, garlic. The reason why I have Janelle doing the chopping is, as you know, I hate to chop. I did grow, I think I'm growing some garlic this year, so I'm going to have to start to get used to it. I'm going to have to swear off that jar stuff. And a couple green peppers. Okay, thank you, Janelle, for your contribution. Woohoo! Okay, and then in the kitchen, who do we have here? We have, yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's a college boy. Oh, Merck's yeah. back from college. That's right. And what he is doing is taking not too much. That looks like too much, Merck. Well, I like a little extra meat. In really? Yeah. Come on, it's only supposed to be a pound. A pound of meat. We're very hungry this year. <laughs> Come on, don't ruin it. No, I'm not kidding. What it is, is it's... Um, You'll never find this recipe anywhere. I promise you that. <laughs> You're an ass. Um, so, we've got the uh, hamburger. <coughs> That's the fatty kind. <coughs> because, as you know, not only clogs your arteries, but it's got all the flavor. Um, 73% fat, the real fatty stuff. We need a little juice in this stuff. Um, so that's a huge package. I could only find it. I only, you're only supposed to have like a one pound of, of ground beef. Um, that looks like, I think he's cheating. And then we're going to need some chopped spinach. So we got three packages here. Three green things is what we remember this as. That's right. Janelle's saying when we tell, what are the three green things, Mom? And that would be definitely a green pepper, celery, and chopped spinach. Uh, and we're going to cook, saute this stuff in olive oil in the next pan. College boy, smart ass with too much beef, um, is going to be doing that. So we're going to get 
peeling, chopping, and sauteing. And then I'll tell you a little bit more about how we put this all together to make a family recipe um, that has spanned the generations. Okay? So get 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 working, kids. Okay, so we're we're progressing. Everyone's chopping and cooking and peeling and plucking and doing all that stuff. Um, let me get back to this recipe. Now, I am a firm believer that one of the things that you could really define families with is if you talk to them about their stuffings. They that is one thing that is so unique um in tradition i think through families that you'll see they have a specific recipe they got through their mom their grandma whatever and they're using it it'll be very different maybe than uh providing you're not buying the stuffing in the box and you might be and if you are this is a good time to stop doing that you pick this recipe try a different recipe look through all the recipes one might ring true to you Make your own stuffing because there's something extra special. There's a secret ingredient in this. And I believe the secret ingredient is your love. When you're cooking and you're, you're using your hands and you're, you're preparing for people you care for, and that goes into the food and that makes the food even better. And when people eat that, they receive that all so, sort of, you know, special magic and love that you created in your own kitchen. So there's nothing that the old stove pop can do that. All right. So anyhow, let's get back to um, this, this recipe. When I was a kid, you know, my mom made this um, and it came from her family from on her father's side and um it, who was italian and the family's italian and austrian and then maybe later yugoslavian and then uh today it's known as croatia where my great grandfather came from and my grandmother came from italy and or she came over on ellis island when she was 16 my great grandmother um and i have do have a picture of them if i can i don't know if i can switch can i switch so there's a picture of my grandmother uh rachel and my grandfather dominic dominico um on their 50th anniversary they were gone by the time i was born so i i know my oldest brother he he remembers um being with them in New Jersey and can give a better detail. I'm a big family history buff, but there's only limits to what I actually know. So I do my best and I like to keep up tradition. So this um, recipe that I grew up knowing as stuffing that my Aunt Joan used and hers. And whenever somebody came into the family, you know, they kind of adopted it. This recipe was very different than the people from the locale of where, where I live. And I would tell kids at school, my stuffing's green. And everyone would go, oh. And uh, I was a little embarrassed. And then, you know, now that we're so, you know, years, decades later, we're much more open-minded and multicultural. And we understand it's just because I lived in a predominantly uh, Dutch English area. And that would not be something they would cook in their family. So, so, um um, you know, so, so I, I grew up and I cooked this and people that came into the family kept the recipe. And then, um, you know what? I check in later on and I find out, I talk to my brother, what kind of stuff are you making? And he's saying something with cranberry. I went, wait, what? He didn't continue though. He used to with making ping. I know my cousin right now is making ping. Um, she, wherever she is. And, and, uh, I was like abhorred, you know, cause I'm like, you drop the tradition. It's okay. But I'm determined because I'm like the family historian. This isn't gonna, this isn't gonna die. You know, we're going to keep this up and, and, and hopefully my grandchildren, my great grandchildren will be eating ping and their stuffings. And, um, you know, that will be, that will be like a legacy, uh, celebrating the Italian side of my family. So, so anyhow, I hear chopping, chopping, chopping. How are they doing? How are they doing over here? Chopping. 
Oh, Janelle's coming. Look at all that. Yep, she's crying. Uh, Mono, how you doing? Good, good. You got it. Yep, okay. Mono's got the bread. You almost done? Yeah. Okay, good. He's almost done. Did you know that 91... 91% <laughs> of Americans will be celebrating Thanksgiving tomorrow. Here's a good old American boy. And uh, how's that coming? Oh, he's got the spinach yeah. spinach sautéing. Yeah, the I'm ground sure. beef is brown. Sure. Um, and what is really neat is that this, this uh, holiday that started in 1691 for the Puritans or pilgrims coming to the New World um, is now... Um, celebrated by Americans that have come from all over the world, not particularly descendants of the pilgrims, but, um, you know, from immigrants and everything. So that's why I'm really kind of proud that, that we have this recipe that has um, taken our own flavor, okay? Now, speaking of flavor, there is a there is a rumor that my mother said that, you know, her father and they, they all used to like to tease uh, her grandmother, my great grandmother, um, and when she was cooking, they'd be going, "No more grappa, mama, no more grappa." So I thought it would be important if I got a bottle of grappa, in the tradition of my great grandmother. I don't know if she they were teasing or if she actually drank it, but I did. One year I had my mom drink it, and she said it was horrible. Um, but um, I'm going to try it. I looked it up, and it can go in coffee. So I'm going to put some grappa in my coffee. It would probably go better in espresso. I don't have an espresso machine. I would love to have an espresso machine. I don't have one. But um, So I'm going to open this and, uh, um, and try some in the coffee and let you know. And we're going to keep on cooking. We're cooking. Okay. So. I pour the grappa in my coffee, and I'm going to take a sip. <laughs> Whoa, wee! No more grappa, mama! Holy crap! Grappa. <laughs> grappa. Yeah, that's a bunch of grappa. Whoa, that is strong stuff. Um. I thought it would be, it's supposed to be made, you know what it's made of? It is made from kappa. It's when you make wine and you take the leftovers, the seeds and the sticks and the skins and all that, if you're done bushing the grapes, you take all the junk, the garbage, and then you bush that up and ferment it and make, holy crap. That is, good gracious me, that is really I hope my great grandma wasn't doing that, drinking that stuff. No wonder, my lord. Tastes like something familiar, but I don't know what. Anyhow, let's get back. Okay, let's get serious. So let's get back cooking. Woo! Here we go. Let's see what they. There, whoops. There we go. Whoa. And Janelle, are you going to add? How much do we have there? Two onions. We're going to add that to the ground beef. Um, Keep it cooking. Three celery, spots of celery. Three two uh, bell peppers and a head of garlic. And a head of garlic. Thank God for Janelle because I hate doing that. Um, my Aunt Louise, who was uh, my grandfather's sister, she would make um, the pig. And the, and the funny thing is that I got from my cousin Carolyn... I got a recipe in her handwriting, which I can't locate for this video. But um, apparently, boy, was I surprised when I got the original recipe. Because the original recipe is not for turkey stuffing. It is ravioli filling. Um, so it, And the recipe is so different than the way my mom made. But similar. Similar but different. Because that's for ravioli. So it had, I think it had cream cheese in it or something. Um, which I would love to do, but I didn't think of it. Um, but that's how the oral tradition goes. You know, you each, it's like the telephone game. Each time somebody tells somebody, it changes a little bit. Um, but one thing we know, we got to have that spinach. Uh, we got to have those green things in there. And for whatever reason, it's not sausage, it's hamburger. That's what they use. 
Um, and there's going to be some seasonings, which I guess I could review right now. We're going to definitely add a bay leaf for luck. And we're going to add some Italian seasoning. Big thing is the Parmesan cheese and some salt and pepper. And then we're going to finish off with, we're going to finish off with some eggs. Then we'll put them in tomorrow morning because we shouldn't be putting eggs in um, overnight. Um, and probably everybody be like, oh my God, you're putting in raw eggs. Yeah, I'm going to put in raw eggs and I'm going to put it right in the turkey. I'm not going to be like, oh, salmonella. Don't do this. Do not eat this if you're afraid of dying from your stuffing. I don't know what the statistics are of how many people have died eating pig, but certainly nobody in my family ever has. So we're going to go. We're going to be courageous. We're going to brave ahead. We're going to say go immune systems and all that. We're going to eat the eggs right in the stuffing right in the turkey then it's gonna go right in the oven and maybe I'm, i'll catch up with you tomorrow morning when i'm doing that um depending on how i'm feeling after drinking this grab of coffee a grab of coffee <laughs> grab of coffee <laughs> anyhow no i'm just kidding um so so okay we're we're moving along we're doing this this is easy it's delicious and in a minute i'm gonna tell you why you need to start traditions okay all right we'll be right back okay so we're coming down to the final stretch here we're going to add some seasonings i'm going to put um as you know i'm not going to measure but i'm going to put lots and lots and lots of italian seasoning which is a mixture of rosemary thyme oregano basil marjoram savory and we're going to cook that in with our onions, our peppers, our garlic, and our ground beef. And then I forgot to mention earlier, one of the most important ingredients is the bell seasoning. Put the nice turkey on the oven, uh, oven on the front. You know, um, Ben Franklin had wanted, instead of our national bird of America, to be uh, an eagle, he wanted it to be a turkey. Uh, but that didn't... He thought he was just joking around, but he said the American spirit is much like a turkey's. So, tomorrow when you're celebrating your holiday, you know, think if you feel like a turkey. Turkey's going to wish he felt like you, eating a meal instead of being being the meal. Okay, so I'm going to add a whole bunch, because you know what, I always start out slow, and then I always add add more because that's that special special like a half a box i got like a half a box this is a one ounce box or half an ounce of bell seasoning and i'll guarantee you i'll probably add more okay so now that we got that in there cooking it up letting all those spices do their stuff they have to open up their cooking they're going to continue to cook in the bird okay so the the natural juices from the bird will cook while they, you know, I roast my bird at 325 degrees for a very long time until the button pops up. I know people are doing, um, Elisa, she's out there brining her turkey. Laura, Laura, who can't be with us, she has COVID, so, I, or no, she doesn't have COVID, but two of the girls have COVID, so she can't be with us this Thanksgiving. Uh, but we'll have a we'll have a lot around the table, just the same. That's the benefits of having a huge family. Um, but I was saying, was going to say, the reason why you might want to start, you know, it's been a rough few years, and I, you know, a lot of people, we've got a lot of loss, we had a lot of sorrow over the last few years. Um, but the one thing we can do is we can kind of connect. I find stuffing and traditions, even if we're making them up is a way to honor our past and connect to our future. We It doesn't stop here. We're going forward. It's a bridge when we have traditions. I consider stopping the bridge from my past to my future. And we're going to eat it in the present. Okay? And you know what? It feels good. Yeah. Now, I don't know who you're going to be celebrating Thanksgiving with, but I know 91% of Americans are going to be doing it somewhere. I hope you enjoy it. 
I want to say how grateful we are to have you here with us today. And oh, for all the new subscribers, oh my goodness, we're so excited at the Handmaidens. Um, if you like this video or any of the other videos from all the different Handmaidens, hit like and subscribe, you know, so we can keep growing the future. We're bridging to the future. Okay, so let's take this and go over and add it to the bread. That motto so expertly to our part into little pieces. There we go. So we're going to take our ground beef, peppers, onions, garlic, Italian seasoning, salt and pepper, uh, bell seasoning, and we're going to add it to our to our breadcrumbs. I've got some bay leaves in there for luck. Yeah, and we're going to just pour it in there. And it's this a little dry at first because tomorrow morning, before I stuff the bird, as I said, I'm going to add eggs. I'm going to add like three eggs, maybe even more. And um, I remember I did, I don't know if I already just told you this, but my mom used to, she would sometimes put the eggs in at night, but then guard the fridge because my brother Gary would always go in there and eat the stuffing. And she was so terrified that he ate the stuffing with raw eggs but i'm thinking you know my father was a professional boxer he used to eat raw eggs like it was his job so i don't know what she was so scared about people have all sorts of fears about food these days and you know that, that may be good maybe not so then we're gonna have i got parmesan cheese you might like romano i take regular parmesan and i'm gonna put the whole container in and that is uh, an eight ounce container. And then I'm gonna take Italian seasoned Parmesan cheese. And I'm gonna add that. To it. This gets a little, sometimes it gets tough to mix up because it is a little on the drier side. So it takes a little, um, what we do normally, but I'm not gonna do it anymore one change i did is we used to mix it with our hands you know that's uh something that was not uncommon get in there and start mixing with the hands i'm going to take the spinach three packages of chopped spinach mix that right in there for a little extra wetness okay and there we go we got a little mash it here this might help Mix and mash and mix and mash and mash and mix. And when I, when I have, when I put it in the turkey, well, it doesn't fit in the turkey. I put in a casserole dish and I bake that separately. So it is, uh, you know, we can just eat it out of there. This was a little of the turkey gravy that I make out of the giblets and, and drippings. Um... <sighs> It's absolutely delicious. And I know it's like, they're going like, well, that's nothing like I make. That's good. I want to know, what do you make? Do you make stuffing that is, you know, a family tradition? Or do you have, uh, make two stuffings? Or do you not use stuffing at all? Tell me. Let me know in the comments below. I want to hear. I want to find out. I love people's traditions. This is mine. This is my family's. This is what we've been doing for generations. And hopefully, if God is good, we'll continue to do for many generations after. See, this is where it gets tough. That's where the hands go in. <laughs> and we start squishing it together. Okay? But I don't want to freak anybody out. Because when you see people using their hands, I mean, I guess it's sort of like stomping grapes with your feet. You know, right? So... We tend to, it works better because it makes sort of a squishy thing. If I was adding the eggs in now, it probably would be going a lot easier. I'll put this in the fridge overnight. Then it's cold. And if I mix it with my hands, then with the eggs, that is really hard to do because it's so cold. Um, it's actually easier to mix when it's a little warm. Um, but the eggs in the refrigerator makes it cold so did we forget anything no we'll review it's three loaves of white bread three packages of, of frozen chopped spinach one to two peppers green peppers 
one onion, two stalks of celery, a whole head of garlic. We're going to use Italian seasoning. We're going to use salt and pepper. We're going to use a half a box of bell seasoning. Um, and then we're going to top it off with three eggs and we're going to put it in our bird or put it in the casserole dish. If you don't, you feel it's unsafe to stuff the bird and we're going to serve it and enjoy it. And you know why usually we usually have this both at Christmas time and when I was a kid, we had a Christmas time and uh, Thanksgiving time, both. So there you have it. King from Northern Italy, generations of family and tradition here right in 2022. Okay, it was good visiting with you. I hope you uh, have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Once again, thank you for being with us. I'm very grateful. Happy Thanksgiving to all of my family out there, everywhere across the United States and beyond. And to all my friends, my coworkers, and especially to you. You take care. We'll see you tomorrow, maybe. I don't know. If not, enjoy that turkey. Bye-bye.